Natalie Dormer, welcome to What Culture. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Great to be here. Indeed. Now, the big reason you're here today is because you're playing, I'm going to get this name wrong, but it's Dr. Lexi. Tapero. Tapero. See, I can't. Mass she effect. sounds like she's from Brooklyn, doesn't she, a little is it bit? Dr. Lexi Tapero. 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 I don't. I can't. T apostrophe. P E R R O. Right. She's an Asari. Maybe it's a very common surname. So that's a race in yes, my, so I know that, but yep. I can't pronounce any of their names, so I wasn't even <laughs> going to bother. But you're much more professional than I am, and you're ahead of the game. I've so learned how to say my character's name. I am that professional. <laughs> Which is good. You got that down, <laughs> then you did everything else. Yeah. Now, it's quite a big deal in the world of video games because Mass Effect is not only this huge franchise. But the big thing is the characters. That's what people love. That's what people talk about. Like in the last trilogy, how, you know, Commander Shepard, all those kind of things. So how was it kind of taking on a role for a character in what is a pretty big franchise? Well, I was kind of sheltered from realizing quite how huge the game is, what well, the trilogy was, and therefore the expectation of Andromeda coming out. And it was only when I started talking to my friends who are gamers that it dawned on me. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh no, How what have I done? Huge. And I was like, oh wow. So, um, but then that made the experience even more fun because I realized that I was really part of something, you know, an entire world that is really anticipated. And as you said, a whole new bunch of characters, a brand new sort of landscape galaxy to explore. And um, yeah, no, it feels cool to be a part of that. Is this the, have you done a video game before? Or is this your first video I game? I mean, I've done the Game of Thrones video game. Of course, yeah. But so that doesn't, I suppose you could argue that doesn't really count because I'm playing a character that I've already created, um, you know, on screen. So this was a great new whole experience to watch a character that's been created by a whole amazing creative team. And then I just come along and add the voice. Mm. Did you get to bring anything else to it? Like, did you read in the lines and go, I don't want to say that, I'd rather say this? No, I was a really good girl. I really? just did as I was told. <laughs> um, no, but that's the fun. I like voiceover recording because, you know, you really do have a laugh in the in the sound booth with, you know, the engineer and the creative team that are in the room. And you can have a play with it and see what works. So um, Lexi's kind of got this uh, kind of gruff, but um, sort of slightly dry humour. Okay. So it makes sense that Brit's playing her. That but, makes sense. You know. And how, I imagine you can't give too much away, but how important is your character to the new Mass Effect that we go forward? Because obviously a lot of the characters appeared in Mass Effect 1, mm. and by Mass Effect 3 you were like, oh man, these, these, I didn't realise how important these characters were going to become. Well, uh, Lexi's kind of imperative to the player because she is um, she's basically the physician and the psychologist of the crew. And she's there to look after the mental and physical well-being of Ryder. I'm there. She's there giving advice, checking that. Um, and then, well, then the player can choose whether they listen to that advice or not. But okay. she's kind of present there on the Tempest ship, which um, the um, players will find out. Um, She's kind of there to try and assist. Okay, so there's there every potential then that this could become one of those Mass Effect. Are characters you offering that, me another job? Are you offering? Uh, yeah, I'd like, like you to be. <laughs> I'd like you to be in my cheap sci-fi <laughs> ripoff of Mass Effect called. I can't like quick. I can't think of something like Earthland or something like that. I don't great. know. Also, I can't come up with a name, so we'll just call her Doctor Lexi and hope that Bioware and EA don't get mad. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah, you're up for that. I'm up for that. Okay, excellent. And how did it all come about as well? Because I imagine they must have come to you and said, mm. "Would you like to play a character?" What do you do then? Do you go and research the franchise? Do you just like talk to your mates that play games? I mean, what happens? Uh, no, I suppose that's why uh, I they were they approached me and I said that sounds cool. That sounds like a lot of fun. But like I said to you, I didn't really realize how huge the tri the original trilogy had been until I started telling people what I was doing. But I was just like I've always wanted to do. Um, uh, I'd seen some of the uh, the early stages of the um, of the imagery of the game, and it's so to me, it's so cinematic. It's so all en engulfing, encompassing, and the writing really impressed me. The detail behind the characters and the races, and um, the history and the mythology of all the different um, crew members. It's it, it's worked out like the most like you know something like like a high production tv show you know not that i know anything about those but you know it's <laughs> no, it's it, it, the writing is so detailed and um um uh, immersive that i was really impressed with it and i thought i'd like to be a part of this mm. and you must have to record a hell of a lot of dialogue because the thing about the mass effect games is there's about 42 different paths you can go on. So I presume they have to go, right, can you please record the good path? And you do that, right, can you record the kind of good path? Then it's the mediocre path, then it's the bad path. I mean, that must 
take forever. Yeah, when the player decides which yeah. what route they're going and you have to give the response to every single exactly. choice and then within that every single choice. So it is com- it's a, it's um it's a different skill set to I use in my you know my day job normally. So but that's kind of fun because often often when you're on a film or on stage it's like well how would this go if the person I'm talking to answered in a different way yeah. and that's the fun of that's the fun of um, you know a game like this yeah. is like the player controls the storyline in a way yeah, it's true does it mean you get to kind of test your range as well because they're like right be happy and then <laughs> two hours later be, it's like be, now be sad, it's though. like be sad and now be well mad I mean I guess yeah. you get to do all of that right completely and it's interesting because it's voice acting and you don't realise sometimes as an actor how much you rely on your eyes or your face or your body to communicate something and when you're reduced solely to your voice you think you are feeling or communicating something and you know the guys on the other side of the glass just aren't getting it they're not feeling it so you have to approach it differently Mm. yeah sometimes you feel you're being a bit melodramatic and (laughs) overdoing it you know but it's trying to make it communicate in the voice so Uh, do you ever get any feedback like no no Nally do that again that was not Not right at all Yeah, too much (laughs) not enough too much again yeah don't say that to me I know what I'm doing (laughs) get out of the booth yeah no but I that's what I'm saying I mean I really did go in listening to them because they have more for once I was in a scenario when the people <laughs> the other people know really more what I should be doing than of me of course yeah but I mean I think between this and Game of Thrones as well you've got potentially I mean obviously I'm sure Mass Effect will be a huge success because the other ones have been and those characters have become iconic within sort of pop culture and stuff like that as have you know the characters of Game of Thrones mm. so did you find that sort of surprising that you manage it you are potentially about to have these two you know one kind of medieval character and one sci-fi character that very well within their genres are going to be well remembered and talked about and discussed I mean most people are lucky to have one and I'm sure you'll have loads more. you may have two in completely different fields which I find quite fascinating yeah I think I was really attracted to um, Mass Effect Andromeda for the same reason that I love these big epic universes that get created and whether it's the Hunger Games or Westeros or Andromeda, it's um, I love that um, when the when the detail of whole worlds and mythologies and histories of the peoples have been created, and God knows we all need some escapism in the current climate in the world. Yeah, nothing's going on. Yeah, <laughs> nothing's going on out there. Um, so it's um, you know that's a there's a little bit of a geek still in my heart. I think you know that little. Uh, it's just the the modern day version of sort of burying your head in Tolkien as a child or whatever. It's like create these entire other worlds. I think that especially something like Mass Effect I think entirely because it does take a lot of there is some Tolkien in there as well and basically they they took sci-fi and they thought whatever we love sci-fi but let's modernise it but it still had that kind of 80s I want to say B movie, that's unfair, but that kind of cheesiness to it. And they knew that they were aware of it. Yeah. So I guess you get to kind of dial into that. So inst- while it's a serious character, you get to have fun with it and just yeah. play around with it a bit. But people emotionally respond to that, like yeah. you're saying. Like we have, there's something built in us that we respond to the, you know, that kind of storytelling. And uh, like you said, we are. Uh, it doesn't matter what your thing is it doesn't matter whether it's gaming or books or TV shows you bond with these characters and you get submerged in these characters journeys and I mean that's just great storytelling whatever the medium and that's kind of what my job is meant to be and it's kind of cool that you get to do it in so many because you get to it on stage you get to do it on film slash TV and now you get to do a digital version version of of yourself how is that when you see the digital character and it's kind of you but it's not you at the same time. You're like, wait a minute, it's my voice and it's kind of me, but that's not me. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. It's totally weird. Yeah. And it, but it's great because you have an opportunity to play roles that you wouldn't ordinarily play um, because, you know, you can look so different, move so different. I mean, you know, I'm blue in this. Because you're like, an alien. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's an alien and she's... Uh, She's this. She's got this incredible brain on her, and the Asari as a race are slightly distant. They're slightly, um, you know, they're very analytical as well, but they're very wise because they're so old. Like I'm 275 years old. It's a good run. It's, it's a good, good run. Yeah. yeah. So it's just fun to take yourself out of that normal casting kind of box, really. Yeah, and play a blue play. alien that's almost 300 years old. Literally play. Is it going to be weird? When, because I imagine sometimes you're walking down the street and people recognise you. But what if they recognise you and start shouting, Dr. Lexi? And you'd be like, what? 
I'm totally up for that. You that, want that? That would be very cool. Do you think you're going to get start to get confused, like, which is the real me? Am I the game me, or is this me, and it's all going to become, like, a big confusing thing? I've pretty... You know, I think that's, like, an actor's occupational, like, uh, train, uh, like discipline. We try not to be schizophrenic. Yeah. <laughs> that must be hard, though, right? Because, you, you, I mean, you're playing so many different roles. Sometimes you must be like... I'm not sure which one is me anymore because you have to continually move your brain into a different place depending on what you're doing. You are right. If you play a character for a very long period of time, if someone calls that character's name, you do end up turning your head. <laughs> but I don't think I played Lexi for enough man hours, unfortunately, yeah. to respond in the way that if people still shout, you know. Dr. Lexi at you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm going to turn my head if you shout Cressida or Marjorie at me before. But, you know, let's see how many of them they do. You know? I was going to say, you may be involved with this forever. <laughs> you may get to 270, but I'm still doing these Mass Effect games. This is crazy. Yeah. Are you ready for the... I mean, I guess you probably are, because I imagine it was the same with Game of Thrones, but Mass Effect fans are... They're loyal and they're passionate, and I think that's why the series has been such a success. Mm -hmm. So are you ready for the kind of... Uh, uh, the reaction to it when people find out that you're doing this and you know people want to they want to find everything about the character they want to find everything about you and there'll be stuff like comic cons where they oh mm. I want to talk you ready for all of that kind of I guess you kind of are because no, yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm ready for that I think I've had good grounding and Game of Thrones and the Hunger Games for that kind of fanatical kind experience of thing, yeah. what I love is if you're uh you know, you're in a coffee shop or you're in a pub or something and someone approaches you and um, you kind of, they're crazy about the project, a particular project, but it's like a non sequitur. They're like, they're someone you would not expect to be, you know, that would be in, like, I'm interested in what game has come up to me and know that I've done the game. Yeah. And they just look like, you know, I don't know, it's a 45 year old housewife or something. <laughs> She's mad about Mass Effect Andromeda. Yeah. You know, because sometimes people surprise you about what their passions are. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, maybe I'll be, it will be revealed to me a whole world of gamers that are all under the radar in that's, their normal lives. That's just exciting, though, right? Yeah. It introduce you to a whole, maybe brand new people that will then find you in other stuff. A whole new fraternity. A whole yeah. new fraternity that can embrace you and everything. Yeah. So, obviously, you've done, you've done this one. Did you enjoy the experience so much? that you think that kind of video game voice acting is something you want to pursue going forward? Well, yeah, I uh, I enjoyed this experience a lot. I uh, I want to be loyal to Lexi, obviously. Of course. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not saying that you should cheat on her. Or <laughs> just a more general question. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Yeah. No, but, you know, like you said, um, I've, I've been very lucky insofar as I've I managed to cross mediums still my entire career, like stage and theatre and film and TV and now computer gaming. And I, as long, I would love to keep on doing all of them, you know, for, for, for a very long time. Yeah. It's not 275 years. Not too, but, that's a long time. But a long time. Although by then, because have you seen all the virtual reality stuff that you can do now where you put a helmet on your head and you are, exist in the actual world as opposed to playing it on the screen? Oh, I know. No, it's crazy. Yeah. It so truly is crazy. And, I, and actors, I think, are going to get find themselves well, as technology develops the way you can interact and it is going to yeah it's going to blow our minds I'm I sure think so, I mean, the other thing is well they want to do it with TV so you don't just watch the TV you put it on and you like you are in Westeros for example yeah. and you're just there talking to them and a lot of people may start to think they actually know you and that you're your friend and then when they see you on the street they'll come up and be like alright buddy and you'll be like what that are you talking anyway. about <laughs> <Does it really? laughs> that happens anyway you get anyway. a lot of hey buddies Pe people <laughs> think they know you because they know your character yeah, yeah. and then yeah. they ask you really strange questions about I imagine things you've done on the TV and you have to try and desperately ex remember ex uh, yeah I know it's true um, but no I mean as an audience member I'm excited about that you know or it, those full immersive worlds yeah that's uh, that's um that would be fantastic. And it means you're engaging people as well. If they're yeah. that passionate about it and they're coming up to you and talking about these things, it probably means you're doing all right. I think so. I would think so. Let's see. Okay, excellent. Nazi Dorma, thank you very much thank for your time. You. Thank Pleasure. you very much.